Dear viewers, hello and a warm welcome to all of you. With interest rates rising up both in India and globally, a good number of stocks have seen their PE multiples compress. PE multiple, as I've shared in my previous videos, is simply a ratio of stock price to earnings per share and is a measure of how much the market is willing to pay per unit of earnings. In some cases, such as in case of loss making new age companies, this was long due. However, I am here to talk of quality and growth businesses. When multiples correct, it is a good time for investors to lap up wonderful businesses at a fair, if not wonderful price. So that's exactly what I'm going to speak of today. That is how to assess growth quality and if it is okay to pay up. With a specific example, I show you a simple way on how much to pay for a certain ROCE and minimum expected returns on the stock. Lastly, I'll also talk of three stocks where the growth potential and the growth quality seem good. I know a lot has been written and said on the matter, and yet margin of safety remains a well understood concept only in theory and not so much in practice. There are extreme conservationists who would not look at a stock if it trades above a price to book value of 1. There are cautious growth investors who would be okay entering at a PE of 25, but not beyond that. Then there are ones who would be okay with entering at a high multiple as long as PEG, that is P ratio to growth rate, is close to or less than 1. Some are fine taking a staggered position as long as the P multiple of the stock is not too far from the long term median average multiple. For instance, if a stock has been trading at a 5 year median multiple of 40 times, they will take solace in the historical multiple and would be okay paying that much. Before we dive into this concept, to set the context right, allow me to start with some extreme examples. A safe stock like HUL was available at a PE of 45 times in FY16. Had you invested then at the seemingly high multiple, your return would still have been at a CAGR of 17%. This is not bad at all, but there is more. If you bought a relatively lesser known stock then, Tata LXC at a multiple of 41 times 6 years ago in March 2016, your gains would have been 572% over 7 years, a neat 31% CAGR. Over a period of time, there are two variables to gains in the stock price. The first is the earnings growth and the other is the multiple expansion or re-rating. For instance, in case of Tata LXC, earnings have grown nearly 5 times in last 7 years, while the multiple itself has expanded from 40 times to 54 times. In case of HUL, the earning multiple has grown from 45 times to nearly 60 times, while the earnings have grown 2.4 times. Now I understand the merit in the warnings to not overpay. But the truth is that a lot of high quality businesses such as Tata LXE will always be out of bounds for over conservative investors, never giving them a chance to have a 10 or 100 beggar in their portfolio. Now I know what you're thinking, that I'm cherry picking these examples. Yes, I have cherry picked these to drive home the point. For every Tata LXE and HUL that can be quoted, there are stocks that were once synonymous with the quality but have gone nowhere in a 5 year interval and have even lost money. For instance, Lupin where the PE multiple, written ratios and earnings have all gone for a toss. I know there is no crystal ball to gaze the future. But if you have the bare minimum understanding of the businesses you invest in, there are a few simple parameters you could use to minimize the chance of seeing your stocks getting derated, that is, the cases where P multiple comes down over time. I would recommend you start with the stocks that have respectable return on capital employed or ROCE of 15% or above. The next thing that you have to check is if there are enough triggers for sustainable growth or reinvestment. I don't mean just the revenue growth, but the visibility on sustainable margins or value addition prospects that could improve margins. That is, you must look for businesses where the profits that are reinvested back in the business are able to generate a higher or at least similar ROCE as the business is generating. This obviously rules out the commoditized and cyclical businesses and limits your universe to companies with structural tailwinds. In case of acquisitions also, you should be very cautious. Statistically, most of them fail to get the desired results and turn out to be case studies on good money thrown after bad. A classic case is Renbexi deal for Sun Pharma. If a company is diversifying into other segments that are unrelated or have nothing to do with the forward or backward integration, you should be mindful on whether these diversions will contribute to higher or lower margins. When it comes to decisions like above, you are basically counting on the management quality and competence. 
So, to summarize what I've shared so far, if you are looking for candidates with re-rating potential or to avoid candidates that could be de-rated, there are three factors you should focus on. A respectable ROC of 15% to begin with, reinvestment prospects, that is there should be enough avenues for growth for the company and these opportunities should be such that incremental capital when invested should allow either similar or higher returns in the existing business. The third is the management competence and quality. A lot of growth investors justify high multiples, citing the top line growth. However, more than the numbers, it is the quality of growth that matters. And only for good quality growth should you consider paying up. Now let me share an excellent example of good growth versus bad growth in the universe of listed companies in India. I came across this example in the book, The Biography of a Failed Venture by Prashant Desai. Here, the author shares the story of his failed venture, Candify, an Indian sports brand that was launched with much fanfare and with ambassadors like Hardik Pandya, Farhan Akhtar and Anil Kumble. As obvious from the book title, the venture failed. But the learnings that have been shared are tremendous for which I would highly recommend you to read the book. One of the biggest reasons for the Candify Ventures failure was lack of patience to grow or chasing growth at any cost that is beyond budget, beyond means and beyond management bandwidth. And this was rooted in misplaced confidence and insensitivity to risks of the management. The author has differentiated virtuous from vicious growth by sharing a more familiar example of DMART, that is Avenue Supermarts, and Big Bazaar, that is Future Retail, to listed businesses in a similar industry of retail that met two completely different destinies. Before DeFi, Mr. Desai was associated with Future Group and was responsible for driving investor engagement for Pantaloon. So, this is as good as an insider view. You see, both Big Bazaar and DMART started their journeys around the same time. The former opened its first store in 2001. DMART followed closely in 2002. While Big Bazaar was focused on general merchandise, fashion and food, DMART focused on fast-moving grocery and general merchandise only. Over the next decade, while Big Bazaar sprinted to 250 stores, DMART moved at a snail pace to just 10 stores. Big Bazaar was in a hurry to grow the store network. It opted for rented model, used debt to grow a business that was relatively working capital intensive due to non-FMCG and fashion-related products. It focused on store MBS and on ad spends to drive footfalls. The model worked for Big Bazaar to grow aggressively in the initial years. DMART, on the other hand, had a starkly different approach. It focused on perfecting the store economics first. It invested in its own stores. The high capital intensity was offset by faster moving inventory and rent saving as DMART avoided stocking items under slower moving consumption categories. The model catered to basic consumer needs who did not care much about store ambience. DMART avoided the expense on store frills with just basic air conditioning. The savings it made were invested into catering to the deepest consumer need, that is value, through discounts on MRP. This is exactly what the customers wanted, thus leading to more footfalls and business per store. And the profits generated were reinvested back in the business in opening more stores. DMART's patient approach avoided the debt trap and the lure of unsustainable growth. And a few years later, the results were vastly different. In the next seven years after the first decade, while DMART opened 190 stores, Big Bazaar expansion was limited to 50. And we all know how things have transpired in their cases. The blind growth became unsustainable for Big Bazaar. It crumbled under its own pace. Without hindsight benefit, a superficial growth investor would have indeed swung towards Big Bazaar had both been listed then. And we all know how that would have turned out for him. Today, DMART enjoys a market cap of over Rs 2200 billion with a clean balance sheet. Future Retail has languished at less than 2 billion and is now confined to books on the business case study. Its flagship chain, Big Bazaar, is now taken over by Reliance Industries. Moving on, as promised, let us now take a look at the businesses where the growth has come along with increasing returns on capital. As such, these companies seem to be doing something right when it comes to expansion strategies. I would like to preface this by saying to not consider these as stock recommendations and do your own due diligence while making any such decision. The first is Infobeans Tech, a small cap IT firm that boasts of clients in the Fortune 500 list and operates in the areas of product engineering and digital transformation. In the last three years, the company has grown the top line by 2.3 times and its operating profit over the same period has grown by 3.4 times. 
and its return on capital over this time has expanded from 16 times to 27 times. The company aims to double in every 2 to 3 years through both organic and inorganic ways and is available at a TTM PE that is trailing 12 months price to earnings ratio of 25 times and at a 5 year average return capital of 23%. The second is PDS. The company acts as a service platform in the textile segment that links the customers, that is global brands and retailers such as Walmart, Target, JCPenney, etc. with designers and factory network across cost-effective manufacturing hubs while managing supply chains and ensuring quality and ESG compliance. As a platform, the more business it does, the stronger it gets from networking effects. With this model, the global brands and retailers can focus on the front-end part of the value chain that matters the most to them, that is being customer-centric and reducing their go-to-market times. The back-end part can be outsourced to financially robust, ESG and process-compliant players such as PDS. The business model allows PDS to operate in an asset light way with low margins but offers very high growth potential and healthy returns on capital. The company is available at a PE of 15 times with 5-year average return on capital of 15%. The third is Narayan Hridale that owns and operates healthcare facilities that initially focused on cardiac and renal but expanded over time to cancer, neurology, neurosurgery, orthopedics and gastroenterology facilities. The company has aggressive capex plan over next 2 to 3 years estimated at rupees 20 billion. The return ratios that is return on equity and capital employed were about 25% each and the debt to equity ratio remains well below 1. The stock is trading at a PE of 32 times and a PEG of 0.7 times. Having come so far, the question remains, how much can you pay up for good growth? Now let me share a quantitative way to go about it. In this example, here is what we know. Stock A has a current EPS or earning per share of 20 times at present. Let's say you have a fair idea that the business will be able to reinvest earnings at 25% return over next 5 years. And because the management is focused on self-sustainable growth, it is not paying any dividend and all growth is from internal accruals with no external debt. The question is, how much will you be willing to pay for a minimum IRR or CAGR gain of 15% on the stock? Well, I have assumed that over next 5 years, given the high returns on capital, more competition will come in and the PE will moderate to 15 times. Now this is what the earning profile is expected to look like as per basic calculations assuming all earnings are reinvested back at 25% rate of return. The fifth year earning of 61 rupees with a multiple of 15 times implies a price of rupees 916 over 5 years. For me to get an IRR of 15% over this stock, the level that I could enter the stock today comes at rupees 455. With an EPS of rupees 20, this implies a current PE of 23 times that I can pay for the stock. So, you should avoid paying a PE of more than 23 times for a stock of a company that is likely to offer an incremental return of 25% on the capital invested back in the business to earn a minimum CAGR of 15% on the stock. You could use some hit and trial or goal seek function in the Excel as such to arrive at a PE that could give you a CAGR of 15%. Depending upon the stock and the minimum returns you want in a stock, this back of the envelope way could give you a rough idea of the PE that you should be willing to enter it. Needless to say, you should have a decent understanding of the management quality, business and industry prospects to get a fair sense of incremental ROCE in the business. If you do not have enough insights or understanding to assess a business on these parameters, growth investing or paying up is not for you. You would be much better at following a disciplined quantitative way of investing with clear entry and exit parameters and with strong margin of safety built in your stock picking system. So with this, I have come to the end of the video. I hope it adds some value to your investment journey. In any case, do share your feedback. Don't forget to press the like button and share the video for more such content. Lastly, do subscribe to Equity Master YouTube channel to get future alerts for my videos. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.